Hey, hey there, what's up, bootstrappers? This is Ryan Nickel coming at you with another uh, coaching tip. Coaching tip number 31. So remember that when you're selling a property and then also when you're buying a property and you're negotiating, that people are buying and they are selling based on emotion. They are making emotional decisions and then they justify it with fact or with logic. I used to think that when I was buying, when I was selling my property, so I'm gonna focus mainly on selling property. So once you got the property, um, I mean, I you can do this. This goes either way. I'm thinking like in my mind, even though I said I'm only going to say less about about um, selling properties. But I recently just bought a property, and this woman was uh, living in her house with no electricity, no heat, nothing. And hey, Dominique, and uh, it came down to it. I asked her the question. I said, "How much longer do you want to live like this?" That's the real question. It's not about price. It's how much longer do you want to live like this? And she almost started crying. She's like, "I'm done." I'm done. And so we got the deal done and we funded it um, and closed before end of the year. So it was it was a good blessing for her. But I digress. Going back to selling a property, I've had two properties. I got one property under contract. I partnered with, um, with somebody on this one and uh, we got it under contract on Saturday and as of Sunday we had two full, we had two offers for the property. And then I personally had a property under, um, that I, I picked up on Sunday, had it deeded over to me and yesterday I put the ad out and within 35 minutes I had well over 60 phone calls and I had four or five people at the house and the very first person that got in the door said, done, I want it, here's my cash. And um, I'm actually at the bank right now because we signed the paperwork and I am depositing, you know, like roughly what, I don't know, $1,700 is what this is, um, for this property. And we're, we're cash flowing this one pretty darn good. But, um, how did I get this stuff? It all comes back to, to the emotional sell. When I used to sell my properties, I used to sell them, um, very logically, very fact based. I'd be like, Oh, 20% below market. Oh, you know, equity position. Oh, all these things that, yeah, those can lead to an emotional decision, but I'm leading with logic and I'm leading with fact. And I would get all this pushback. Well, what about this? And what about this? And so I decided to change my marketing when I started to do this. Instead of talking only about the, um, the, 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 the logical features of the property, I started talking about emotional because here's the reality of the situation is that the people that I sell these properties to, I sell or finance them to them. They can't get banks anywhere else. There's, there's either a credit hiccup somewhere or there is a, um, I don't got this glare from the sun on my face, but it's all good. There's a, a credit hiccup where they don't have enough time on the job or just whatever it is. They don't document their income, what, whatever. I really don't care. And my whole philosophy is that if you can pay, you can stay. And I tell them that. And so what I do is I lead with my, my marketing. I just basically, if it's a for rent to own home, I lead with, you know, have you ever wanted to have your own home that your kids can grow up in and not worry about, you know, uh, I can't qualify for whatever reason. This is the opportunity for you. This is the home that you can grow old and you can see your kids grow up. Your kids can, you know, and I've actually like had people cry when I'm talking to them, you know, not intentionally, but like, look, you know, have your daughter learn to walk in this house. Have your son lose his first tooth in this house. Have your boy you know, go ahead and have his prom pictures in this house. This is a home for you. And I actually don't use the word house. I use the word home because it's emotionally a charged word. I said, have this be the home where your kids will look back on and they'll have all their memories in this home. And this will be your forever home if you choose for it to be so. At that point, they're sold. They're so like, oh my gosh, what do I have to do? How do I get this home? How, how can I buy this home? I'm like, well, you know, these are, the, these are the terms. This is the down payment that we're looking for. And they're scrambling. I had one lady in, in one of our properties uh, two weeks ago, she drove up from Merced, which is about a two and a half hour drive to where this property was at. And then she drove to Los Angeles, which was like another six hours. It's crazy because she wanted to go down and ask her friends and family to help her with the down payment because we were... Um, we were looking for a large down payment on this home and she had, uh, she had a third of it and she was looking for the other two thirds. But because she, again, she was emotionally attached to it. She wanted it so bad. Uh, same with the house that we just, uh, got rid of, um, yesterday for, you know, it was on the market for 35 minutes and the dude walked in and he's like, this is, this is, this is my house. This is my new home. I'm, I'm calling this home. And it, same situation, you know, we just, we, we appeal to their emotions and as you're doing that, I mean, I can tell you what, you are going to see people start to, to jump hoops and hurdles for you because you've tapped into an emotion and the emotion is what drives all, all forward progress. You know, if, when they talk about motivated, you know, how do you get someone to be motivated? We look for like motivated sellers and you want a motivated buyer. 
Well, what do you think is what drives that motivation? It's the emotion behind that puts momentum and propels that motivation to movement. And so without that emotion, you're really just kind of like pushing parked cars sometimes because logically you're trying to build, you know, an end to that equation, the emotion, and you're trying to lead with logic. And it's, it's difficult to go backwards. It's easier to go with logic and then have, excuse me, with emotion and then have the logic you know, come after the fact. Because once they're emotionally into it, then you can go, and this is the reason why you should, blah, 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 all these facts, fact, 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 fact. But it's the emotion that hooks the person. It's the emotion that motivates and moves the person to take action. Um, so anyway, if that helps you with your selling, if that helps you with your buying, get out there and do it. Because I can tell you what, when I learned that one little trick, that one little hook to start leading with emotion, instead of leading with logic, I started to see my sales go through the roof. I was able to sell property a lot faster because be, before my lead time, I'd be sitting on, on properties. Again, you know, this is a seller's market. So it's a little bit different than in a buyer's market, but my lead time has gone down from seven to 10 days on market to three to four days on market. And sometimes, you know, in this case, you know, um, one day, 35 minutes, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit uh, of an anomaly, but I, I, I average between two to three days on market and it's gone and I have multiple offers and I attribute most of that to, excuse me. The fact that I'm leading with emotion. And again, the same thing goes for, for a seller. You got to find out what is the pain that the seller is in. Did they just lose their job? Did they, are they going through an, a divorce? How can you solve the emotional bleeding that's happening? How can you fix that problem? In fact, I just spoke to a lady yesterday. She bought a house a year ago. She put $10,000 down. She was with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend beats up on her. It's a sad situation. Um, so she has some domestic violence issues. She moved out in September and has been paying his mortgage. I want you to realize that. September, October, November, December. Here we are in January, the fifth month. And uh, she has not been able to make this month's payment because she can't afford it. And, um, and, and, and talking to her, I was like, wow. You know, she's, just, she's laying out all these facts. And then I just basically asked the, asked her the question. I'm like, and she didn't she didn't say it, but I I verbally, uh, you know, uh, you know, asked her the question, and the question was is, are you kidding me? This guy beats up on you, and you're giving him a free house, for slapping you around, and at that point, she was like, yeah, 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 that's what's going on. I mean, she, she couldn't feel the weight of what was really happening. And sometimes you have to dig a little deeper and, you know, say some things that really cause some emotion to come out. And at that point, she's because she's not fed up. And unfortunately, she was not fed up enough to, to do anything because he's kind of just dicking her around like, oh, you know what? Um, he changed the locks on her and she's trying to show the property so she can sell it. And no agent wants to work with her because of the situation that's going on. So now she's just going to let it go to foreclosure. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We'll get you some cash, honey. I'm not going to, this guy is not going to walk all over you. He slapped you around. He's pushed you around too much. And we're not going to let him do that anymore. It's time for you to take a stand. And if you need someone to lean on, you can lean on me. And I'm going to get this guy out of the house and I will go ahead and save your credit. Because that's her biggest thing. Is she's, she's afraid of her credit. And so for me, the emotional hook is like, shoot, I can take over this house on these payments and get the guy out in 60 days. And I can make the mortgage payment, which is about two grand. And I think I'm, I'm aiming to make some, you know, some money on it. For her, all she wants is to have her, her credit intact. Because right now she's going to, she's going to go negative this month and she's going to make all right, my wife is calling. We're about ready to have a baby today, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this one short. I'm Ryan Nickel. I created this for you guys. Just remember, you're one deal away from changing your entire financial future. And these deals, they come fast and they come easy, but when you lead with emotion, they come even faster and easier. All right, I'll talk to you all later.